My name is Thomas F. Bennett. I'm uh, one of the four Bennett brothers who served in, uh, in World War II. I served in the U.S. Navy. I was uh, inducted into the Navy on May the 3rd, 1943 in uh, South Carolina along with uh, about 19 other young men from Burlington and we were transported to uh, Bainbridge, Maryland uh, to uh, do our, uh, our service up there, training service, and uh, we did that and uh, one of the toughest assignments in, during that process was <coughs> trying to put out the fire on a, a hull of a ship that uh, was spewing fire inside and uh, me about 130 pounds trying to manhandle a, a three, three inch hose with about a hundred pound pressure on it. Anyway, finally uh, uh, finished our basic training at Maryland uh, and uh, went, went on leave and uh, uh, during that period of time uh, I married a wonderful woman named Iris Johnson and uh, then went reported back to Bainbridge, Maryland after my leave uh, to a, an area called OGU, which is Outgoing Unit. And about five or six weeks later, I received uh, orders to report to Philadelphia. They were mustering a crew to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, go aboard a ship, and so I was uh, transferred to uh, Philadelphia. And then a Saturday morning, early in December, I guess it probably was, it was cold as whizzes. We were put on a train and went down to Baltimore, Maryland. And out at Maryland Dry Docks, we went aboard an old freighter type ship that was used by Frank Buck during, after World War II, World War I, to bring animals back from Africa. Back in those days, they had a lot of circuses and what have you. In, in any event, we commissioned the old uh, ship. The, the name of it was the USS Ocelot IX-110, IX standing for non-classified vessel. Uh, the ship would not uh, maneuver on its own, so uh, a couple of days there, and then they uh, hauled us away from the dock, with some tugboats and hauls up to uh, to Virginia, uh, Maryland, uh, not Maryland, up to Port Portsmouth, Virginia, and we tied up to a dock there and stayed for about three or four months, undergoing repairs and and trying to get the ship seaworthy. During the process of that time, we had I believe it was about four shakedown cruises to test the old boat out to see how it was going to serve. Now this ship was old, it had rust about uh, an inch thick on the hull, it was uh, riveted together rather than being welded and that sort of thing. Anyway, it was a heavy thing, 10,000 tonner, and uh, finally after about four shakedown cruises, we went on, went down to Guantanamo Bay and went through the Panama Canal and back up the west coast to uh, San Diego. And there we went into dry docks and uh, we scraped the hull good and uh, uh, got it uh, a little more seaworthy. And we, we took aboard about a thousand uh, sailors, Marines and Army people and took off for, uh, for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the islands out in the, in the Pacific, uh, Hawaii, Hawaii and Iowa. And we, on, on that stint, we were uh, sailing uh, in a, uh, with uh, surrounding uh, ships, battle wagons and that sort of thing. And we got to Pearl Harbor and uh, the old ship was so fragile that uh, when we took the captain aboard out, out going into the port, 
our captain told him, said, now you, you, you better go in easy because this ship might not uh, give you full astern when you call for it. He said, I'll, I know how to manage this. So anyway, we came in too fast, and when he said full astern, the engines did not respond, and the, and the tugs lines broke loose, and we crashed into a dock and, and tore about a 10-foot strip out of the left hull of the ship. Anyway, we underwent more uh, conversions in Hawaii, and they uh, did a lot of changing in, in, the, uh, in the area of the ship that would accommodate a Commodore who came aboard before we left Pearl Harbor. He was a, he was a Commodore, and he was commander of Service Squadron 10, which serviced the Third Fleet. Uh, we left Hawaii and uh, went out to, to uh, the South Pacific and we wound up in the Western Carolina Islands in an area called the Ulithia Tolls. The Ulithia Tolls was a, uh, a series of islands, about five or six of them, that was sort of shaped in the form of a horseshoe and of course we had a had a, a perfect entrance that, that had electronic equipment with it to let uh, let the gate in underwater to for ships and uh, and occasionally uh, or incidentally that served as a floating navy yard for the, the ships in the South Pacific so that they would not have to go back to, to Pearl for supplies and repairs etc. One of those islands was cleared of natives and served as a uh, recreation island for uh, servicemen as they came in from uh, from the battles in the Pacific and that sort of thing. And uh, we had a few incidents instances where uh, submarines, uh, Japanese suicide subs, would slide in under a battle wagon or something and get into the into the area there and. Uh, and, and immediately some destroyers would stop, drop, start dropping jet depth charges to uh, get rid of those uh, uh, submarines. And I could hear the old rivets off of my old ship zinging through the air when they would drop a depth charge. And occasionally there would be a suicide plane that would fly in. It was told that uh, one of the islands which was used as a recreation island for the servicemen sort of looked like a, 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 uh, a, a uh, aircraft carrier from the air at night and occasionally they would drop a bomb on, on the, one of the islands over there and then on other occasions the bomb would, would actually hit a, 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 a aircraft carrier and uh, I remember the Randolph was hit right off our starboard bow and uh, did quite a bit of damage but it was it was really uh, it was about as peaceful as you could uh, presume it to be in a, in a war zone we had movies out on the deck at night and that sort of thing we were not intimidated by what might happen with uh, with with lights on at night and that sort of thing Anyway, uh, after serving, and we serviced the third fleet there and had our, our Commodore, who was commander of that, was aboard our ship. And uh, then in uh, early 45 or mid 45, somewhere around there, we moved out of the Ulithi Atolls and moved down to Lady Gulf in the Philippines. And uh, this is just prior to the war, and then, of course, we certainly did not know that we were that close to uh, the ending of the war. Anyway, uh, after, after being in, in, in Lady Gulf for quite a few months, our ship moved on to uh, Okinawa and we were there. Uh, actually, I was not on the ship then. Uh, before we left and just before the war ended, myself and, and five other guys off my ship uh, had orders to report back to the United States, uh, but they didn't provide any transportation. Well, I being a quartermaster and, and had uh, access to what was going and coming, I contacted the uh, 
the master of a, uh, a commercial ship and learned one that was going back to the States and, and I, so to speak, bummed a ride for all us guys uh, to go back on that ship. During that trip back to the United States, it was such a slow trip, the war ended and by the time we got into uh, uh, into uh, uh, the uh, California coast, the war was over and a lot of guys on my ship had already been uh, 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 taken out, out of the service and had their ruptured duct and, uh, and, and we, uh, it, it just took us that long to get back. After, uh, uh, in a few days, I received uh, uh, orders to uh, go on a leave, and I went on leave and uh, uh, had to ride a train across from San Francisco to Raleigh, which took about five or six days, but that was okay. I was looking forward to getting home. After I got home, then I uh, had, uh, I think, about a 10-day leave, and I had orders to report to... Uh, Charleston, South Carolina for discharge. Well, I went to Charleston and uh, hadn't been there but a mo about a week or so and I got orders that I was to report to a, uh, a tugboat uh, in the harbor there. Uh, it was the USS Umpo Umpqua and uh, it was what they called a seagoing tug. And I was to go to relieve another quartermaster who already had all of his points to get out. And, uh, and I was still short about one point. They, they gauged your points by the time you'd been in, um, amount of time you'd been in service. Anyway, I was a little bit ill and peeved to be uh, relieving a quartermaster who had not served overseas so that he could get out of the service and I was going to have to take his place. I was assured that this tug, this USS Umpqua, did not even ever leave the dock. It was just, just down there waiting for something to happen. I don't know what. Anyway, it hadn't been aboard very long until uh, we were ordered to pick up a couple of barges which had faulty ammunition and take them out to sea and dump, them, dump the ammo. Well, we got about 50 miles out and was uh, sent some of our crewmen back onto the uh, barges to dump those depth charges over the side. And lo and behold, by the time they hit foot on, the, on, on those barges, we had a radio message that we had the wrong barges, that this was live depth charges. And that was the closest, uh, the scariest, I guess, I ever was on, on the ship. Anyway, that, that still embittered me more having to serve like that after I uh, had done my stint uh, overseas. Needless to say, I was a little bit frustrated and aggravated, so my captain of the, sh of the tugboat realized that I was in, in, in despair and that sort of thing because I had not been home at Christmas in three years and I wanted to be home with my family. So he graciously gave me a, a, a leave of about six days to go home for Christmas, and which I did. And when I came back, uh, of course, I had my, all my points to get out, and uh, I was relieved of my duties on the, on the tug, and I was discharged from the, the, the U.S. Naval Air Station at Charleston, South Carolina, on uh, January the 4th, I believe, 1946. In the service, Frank Bennett. And Frank, you, what did you learn from the years in the service that you ta have taken with you over the years? Well, you know, as I said to start with, I, I could not envision myself being in the Navy because uh, I could, I'd get sick swinging in a swing, let alone being on a ship and <laughs> rocking back and forth on the ocean. But anyway, it, it taught me that, uh, that life is more than just uh, a game. You, you've got to learn how to discipline yourself and, uh, and, and, and serve your fellow man and also uh, respect and, and love and serve your country 
uh, and, and preserve those freedoms that uh, we uh, often take for granted.